Yeah, hi everyone, it's uh, it's Shin here uh, with a little announcement. You see, Steven came up with this idea for a whole skit about me stealing Burning Goji's jaw. But unfortunately, it was it's too dialogue heavy, so it's going to be its own separate upload. So, so, so be on the lookout for that one, okay? Okay, everyone, thanks for watching. Oh, and by the way, since it's a Shin Godzilla appearance, here's some... Silent Screen! Hello collectors, it's Steven here, blah 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 blah, Godzilla 1995 Ultimate Burning Version. This Bandai Premium Web Shop exclusive will be hitting North America in a few weeks, and after my unboxing making the rounds, many want a closer look. So, let's take a look to see whether or not it's worth adding into your collection. Spoiler alert, no. So Bandai here sat around in the boardroom and was all like, yo, gee, how we gonna milk these suckers some more? I don't know, Jay, maybe we can churn out a billionth 1995 sculpt. HBU fam, sounds good, G. And then they hired a bunch of Chinese to piss on them, and it was like, yo, 90 bucks, please, and then nobody cared. This is my whole review if I put in as much effort into it as they put into this figure. Now, y'all know me, so please prepare yourself for some childish humor in this video. Including reissues, this is the fourth time they have used this sculpt, and in a way only NECA, wait a minute, it's Bondi? Holy j are you kidding me? Yeah, even more they sh the bed here. Why? The eyes. We are more than five goddamn years into this line, and this is the kind of sh they put out. The first time, kind of understandable since they were, you know, figuring everything out, but we are having quality control issues that have existed since the line began. Once more, the gums and the teeth, they're pretty screwed too. One side is black, and the other side is red. It's like they said, how lazy can we be with this figure and maybe get away with it? Honestly, it's kind of crappy that they're able to look at these and say that it's good. Anyway, Ultimate G here is glossier than the original, which some like, others don't. It's partially accurate since he did look like this in some scenes in the movie. He was kind of wettish, so it's more so a personal preference for the collector. The burning patches are nicely done. They're very detailed, and I think they look better than the original, which you'll see in a comparison later. Overall, I think this is probably the most stunning part of this figure, and yes, when I say stunning, I do actually mean that. There is surprisingly something good about it. The claws also look pretty fine too. I don't think there's any way that they can screw those up, surprisingly, but hey, you know, it can be. It can be screwed up. The dorsal plates are red and orange, which may not necessarily be accurate all the way down, but some like it this way. I don't. I personally think it looks like a bootleg, but y'all finally got what you asked for. The main translucent dorsal plates look great. Honestly, again, the translucent parts, I love them. But the smaller painted plates, I don't. Some are chipped right out of the box, while others aren't consistently painted. Some are more red than they are orange, and vice versa, so it has a chaotic scheme here, which I personally don't like. Again, in summation, the burning patches are the only things that look good on this figure. Articulation on this guy is pretty much identical to everything else you've seen on the 95 mold, so I'm going to go over it pretty quickly and only point out some of the differences on mine here. So first we have the head, and as you saw in my unboxing video, the jaw rather easily fell out like that. Yeah, it was pretty easy to pop off. However, I've done a little bit of figure surgery on it, if you will, and I'm able to say now that the jaw doesn't necessarily fall off every single time I open and close it. I had to heat up the socket in the head, and all I did was just pop it back in, and we're pretty good for now. But you know, it is what it is. Be careful, because it might like to pop off. Mine's still a little loose, and I can still make them a little wonky looking. So the head attaches into the neck on a ball joint, and then we have another ball joint in the body at the shoulders for the connection. So you can lift Godzilla's head up and down, move him left to right and all that fun stuff. But let's be honest here, do you really want that looking at you? So yeah, keep his head to one side or the other. Ball jointed shoulders, which allows you to spin the arm around entirely if you want, but be careful because as I'm sure you can hear, there's some grinding on the sculpt, which you don't necessarily want, but hey, you can do that. We have bicep swivel in the form of a ball joint where the bicep connects. We have the double hinged arms, which this one on mine is rather difficult to move, as you can see here. Moving out is fine. Moving in, not so much. But this one, it's pretty much like that, but better. Yeah, disappointing. We have double ball jointed wrists. So you can spin the wrists around, move them around. We have an ab crunch and a waist joint, both ball joints, so you can spin Godzilla around if you want. 
Yada, yada, yada. All right, now the hips. This is one of those things where a lot of people seemingly think that they're a huge problem because they create gaps, which is true. But as you'll see here, if I can pop the leg off, no. All right, as you can see here, there is a barbell style ball joint in there. So if you do have this gap that people don't like, here's what you do. You take the thigh and you push up at the hip and it's pretty much gone. So there's nothing to really worry about there. But anyway, we get a nice range of movement there. This hip was really stuck. You can hear it squeaking. It was like deathly stuck. So I had to pop it off, heat it up, and I had to use a lot of dish soap to get it loose. And now it wants to move. This leg on the other hand, so there's a ball joint that seats here in the thigh, and then there's a ball joint that seats here in the crotch. The ball joint in the crotch pretty much refused to move. And whenever I would move this leg around, it felt like it would snap. So I had to loosen up a bit. Now it does move, but it's not necessarily secure. So make sure that when you do move this guy around, if anything's stuck, you do some basic figure maintenance to take care of it. Not something we should do on a $90 figure that um, this is the fourth time they've used that mold. Yeah, get your shit together, Bondi. So anyway, hinge knees with a swivel. We can move them. We have a couple ball joints in the ankle area. So this way we can move his feetsies around. This one from the knee down is super loose on mine. Disappointing. And then the same tail that we're used to for pretty much all of the Heisei Godzilla releases. A bunch of ball joints in here, except for this portion of the tail is a full fixed sculpt. As you can see, it is kind of stiff. Doesn't like to move around. Yeah. So all in all, if you have seen one of the 95 mold, You've seen them all. On to accessories now. We get an extra set of hands. They are sort of splayed open. Am I going to show you how to put these on Godzilla? No. Why? All you have to do is pop the hand off at the wrist, make sure you're grabbing closer to the base, and then pop these suckers on. Now, if you're having a hard time doing that, just heat up the currently attached hands, heat these up, and then pop them on, because the ball joint is very small, very fragile, and you don't want to break something, you ham-handed collector. Lastly, for accessories, we get the infamous steam pieces that everyone was gooing and guying about whether or not they actually look like fluids only a man could make or actual effect parts. Anyway, so we get one piece to wrap around Godzilla's neck. We get one piece to wrap around his thigh at the hip. We get another piece to go at his right shoulder and another piece to go at his left forearm. So what are we doing here, guys? All right. So the way that I like to do this is I like to first take the shoulder part because this one is a pain, the right shoulder part. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to have to pull the right shoulder down a little bit so that way you have this gap there. Yeah, you actually want gaps on your figures for these effect parts. So on the right shoulder part and the part for the hip, you have this little clip here. All you're going to need to do is just slide it in. This one is a royal pain in the ass. So I've had to practice and practice and practice. There we go. Got that one in. Then we have one for the hip, the thigh area. So this is one of the opportunities you'll have to actually exercise your ability to use joints because you're going to have to pull the leg down at the hip to get that gap. Yeah, you actually want it. And then what you do is you just slide that clip in till it hooks on to the thigh there at the hip and then push the joint up. There we go. Next up, we have the forearm part, right? So this just slides over the forearm. This one can be a little loose. May not necessarily like to stick, but you just got to work with it. And there you go. And then lastly, we have the part that goes around the neck. This can be a little tricky also. You may have to stretch the part out a little bit. There we go. And then all you have to do is slide that down. And now Godzilla is steaming mad. So all in all, the accessories that we get with Ultimate Burning version are pretty cool and they're fitting. The steam effects, while not necessarily aesthetically pleasing, because it's kind of a new effect for an old sculpt, it doesn't necessarily blend in well together, it's nice to have it. And what's even cooler than this is that since these effects are fit for the 95 sculpt, you can put these on the other 95 sculpted figures that you have, whether it be birth version or the original Burning Godzilla. So if you just want to get this figure for the effects and then sell the actual figure itself, 
you can do that and not lose out too much. Just good luck in finding a buyer. And your size comparison. Because there's maybe three people at this point who don't know how big the 1995 mold is. Rounding the corner of this review, a side-by-side -side with the original Burning Godzilla. In every step of the way, except the burning patches and the detail of the ID cals, not the application, the original beats the repaint. With time comes refinement and honing your craft. Yet here, we have a pile of sludge sculpted in Godzilla's image. I don't have much to say here that the pictures really can't say for themselves. It's amazing how they managed to screw up near what some would call perfection in this case. So, buy it now, skip, or wait for a deal. The paint and decals are, to be blunt, and I'm sorry if this offends your virgin ears, are f***ed. The articulation spotty, and the effects, take them or leave them. I enjoy them personally. In nearly every way imaginable, Bandai took a fan-favorite Godzilla and just spat out a repaint for the market, not bothering to do any form of quality control at all. Some of you commented on my unboxing or elsewhere on image boards saying I was rather calm, acting like I needed to be mindful that I was being recorded. This isn't the case. I'm just so apathetic to the quality this line is bringing with it, and every screw up brings with it comedy at this point. It's very, very black, dark humor. I wanted this release to be amazing. I truly did. But I'm, I'm heartbroken, guys. To be honest, I'm kind of heartbroken. I feel bad for the people who waited for the ultimate burning version. <sighs> the silver lining here, however, is there's actually something good to be found in the burning patches. Now, I used camera trickery and a laser pointer, but if this guy were to be made in the Kokyo Kyoke line, here's a look at what Bandai should do. This is how the ultimate burning version should be. A replica of the idea of a movie icon dying in a light show. Not some cheap looking figure they're going to charge almost $100 for. Now, a Bandai rep once said something to the effect of, we want to show NECA how it's done. And if it is poor quality figures, then congrats Bandai, you're doing one hell of a job. This is absolutely not something you would expect from a collector's division charging this much money. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and be sure to like, subscribe, and drop a comment down below to share your thoughts. If you're interested in picking this figure up or others like it, check the description for some cool links to take you where you need to go. Why don't you watch some more videos? Click the annotations on the screen now for more great content. Thanks again, and I'll catch you in the next video.